Greetings, I'm Sophus. Today this build is less about specific units and more about subterfuge and strategy. The intent was to make a sort of roguish faction, one that can take advantage of vassals and foreign cities, as well as recruit force from others. Here's the faction setup. The form traits are elusive, light-footed and keen-sighted, or very mobile, sneaky racial units good at disengaging. The culture is dark. We are picking them due to their research boosts and their Call the Weak ability. The society traits are Vigilante Knights and Keepers of Knowledge. One gives a source of impudent income and the other makes vassalizing free cities easier and boosts your knowledge income. The first tome will be Alchemy. Your leader must be a Materium Dragon due to affinity requirements for the tomes. And here's the tome setup. We start with Alchemy for the Afflictor unit. This will be our main debuffer, lowering enemy status resistance and applying 2 damage over time effects. Disperse Afflicting Miasma helps apply debuffs when your Afflictors have their skill on cooldown. The Afflicted status goes a long way to fill an enemy with debuffs. The Material Refinery helps knowledge income and will be more valuable later in the game once you have a Transmutation Circle. Lastly, the Alchemist's Lab is a special province improvement that boosts knowledge income and has an easy requirement for its adjacency bonus. Tome of Zeal comes next for the Legion of Zeal enchantment. Spirit damage is valuable against afflicted enemies, as it causes Condemned, lowering their status resistance. Condemnation is the spell equivalent, to help lower enemy status resistance in a pinch. The Circle of Zealotry helps with draft and stability, and like the Alchemist Lab, has an easy requirement for its adjacency bonuses. Next, the Tome of Shades gives us, well, the Shade. This is a versatile skirmisher unit that can hold its own well enough in melee combat, but is better suited for quick engagements against weakened enemies. They will be the front line to our Afflictor backline. What we really want from here is the Shade Network. Its knowledge income bonus can ramp up very fast, especially when this faction strategy works around city states. Shadow Blades will help any of your melee units ignore enemy defenses so long as you've managed to inflict the blind status. And Living Shadows will help your relatively fragile racial units get some invasion. Tome of the Doom Herald is an important part of the morale lowering strategy in combat. Joy Siphoners is a powerful minor transformation, giving morale leech for your units. Cruel Weaponry simply buffs your damage against those demoralized units, and plays well with the Dark Culture passive for extra damage on weakened enemies. Cause Despair helps lower enemy morale in a pinch. Tome of Subjugation is next, and the point of this demoralizing strategy in the first place. Final Ultimatum is what will enable you to recruit routing enemies, expanding your roster of units by adding whatever you might fancy from your enemies. Intimidating Aura stacks as another means of lowering morale, speeding up the process of routing the enemy. Subjugating Raid is a handy siege project to help grow your cities, especially when you need to pacify those more warlike free cities to bait them into vassals. Lastly, the Tyrant Knight is a good shock unit to help break enemy morale. Tome of Transmutations next, giving a minor transformation that boosts the defense of your racial units. Good for making your sneaky warriors hardier, and Adaptive Armor compounds on that by raising their defense to non-physical attacks. The Transmuter is a decent tier 4 battle mage with the ability to lower your enemy defenses and stun. Also worth mentioning, the Transmutation Circle Province Improvement gives you any magic material that you might need. Tome of Severing is your roguish response to a handful of threats. Disrupting Blades gives you a way to disable enemy enchantments. Final Banishment helps stop undead based strategies, and Astral Severance is your means to remove magic origin units. Lastly, the Spell Ward gives you a Spell Jammer on the go, to remove the threat of enemy combat spells. Then we go with Tome of the Crucible for Meteor Arrows giving area damage to your ranged and skirmisher units. The Great Foundry gives you more gold and draft and access to an elemental battle mage unit. 
you have options when it comes to the last tome. Though you could go for the Tome of the Creator, you don't have much in the way of elemental units aside from the one granted by Crucible, so it won't give you much benefit. The first alternative is the Tome of the Golden Realm. Bazaar of Wonders is a great money-making special province and luxury markets will expedite both construction and recruitment. Reagent Refinery will give you plenty, given the Circle of Transmutation assures each city will have at least one magic material. The Gold Golem is a strong tier 5 unit, exceptional as a frontliner, with its own stun status to Gilded. Gilding Blast gives you access to that status as a combat spell. The second alternative is the Tome of Prosperity. Shrine of Prosperity will boost your city growth gold production and give access to a handful of units to recruit in your cities. Blast Armors is an interesting selling point for this tome as it gives your racial units inner grace as a means of sustained healing to keep them in the fight for longer. Garden of Affluence will also help your gold and mana income, depending on your city configuration. In campaign, your racial units work as the buffers, reducing enemy morale and inflicting status effects. Following the rogue theme, Shades and Afflictors fill that role best, however they are not the hardiest units around, they simply do a good job of weakening the enemy. If you want better units from within your own faction, you'll have access to the Transmuter who can inflict a sun effect and sunder enemy defenses. You'll also have access to the Tyrant Knight to help break enemy morale. Of course, in practice that's a fairly limited roster and Dark Culture does not provide you with any sort of innate support. However, the role of your racial units is to break the enemy so you can capture routing units and hire them for your faction, and what other units you may get will depend on the map, other players and free cities as well. An option to consider is going for Ritualist Heroes, as they are capable of deploying a lot of support abilities and summons, giving your armies a means to heal and restore themselves between battles. What you choose to deploy in battle is up to you. You'll have plenty of options during Rally of the Legions, and any foe without control loss immunity can be hired through the final ultimatum spell. Where the build really shines is in the fact you benefit from bordering other nations, boosting your research output, which in turn boosts your allegiance with free cities. The bounty rewards you get from being Vigilante Knights also give you plenty of Imperium and a sort of mercenary feel to your playstyle. So that is about what I can say for this build. You have faster research, a means to get more Imperium, gold and mana, and the means to make plenty of vassals. What you do with it is up to you and the circumstances you run into in your maps. And that's what I have for you today. I hope you're having a good day and see you next time.